Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, just a quick shot video on um, what we're up to. Um, you know, we're still putting the coats of water locks up on the face frames upstairs. So uh, we put out three coats of sealer arm. We're actually going to hold off on the uh, last two coats of satin because, you know, we got to get them end caps installed. And also, we, we're working on our crown. We got to get that crown put up there. So um, what we did was we um, we made a little mock-up of, you know, what we kind of wanted to, that crown to look like. You know, we can't just go buy a piece of crown and, and have it in purple heart. So... Um, so we did, we had to make our crown anyways, but the crown that we were, we wanted to try to use, uh, the style, we knew we had to come up with our own type of a, a little twist on a crown molding because, you know, if you look at this crown, which is probably the most common, this is a four and a half inch, I believe, four and a half inch wide crown. You know, we have three foot wall cabinets and, you know, they get pretty high up on the ceiling, towards the ceiling. But there's still enough space between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling because we have nine foot ceilings. So, so we knew we wanted a wider crown, but we didn't want this um, conventional profile, which I guess you could consider it a colonial. I'm not sure what you would call it, but it has like a double curve and a cove at the base. And so, and then the spring angle is, uh, they call it a spring angle. It's how far it projects out off the face of the cabinet is uh, 38 degrees. Um, so in our face frames and our, and our cabinet doors and drawers, they're inset. So what they have is this little reveal line that goes around the perimeter of the door and draw, it makes it look like the door and draw is actually floating within the face frame. So we kind of um, come up with our little idea on how we wanted to try to make our, our crown molding kind of complement that, that little detail of the shadow line. So um, this is just uh, one piece of wood that was cut. And then what we did was we uh, cut a groove and put a spline. And then we cut a groove and we put like a little hat on the top. So this is kind of like traditional. I guess you could say the cove because we do have we do have a curved on our raised panel so this kind of jives with that and then this shadow line which we use to separate the parts so there's one part two three parts is kind of uh, complementing what's going on with the doors on the inset so there's our molding it's almost the same uh, four and a half inches as a traditional, but we just kind of um, put a little twist on it ourselves to kind of um, make our own style crown and kind of jive with our cabinet. So, and then um, let me see if I can put it together with one hand. But this is a shoe molding, and that goes on the cabinet face frames first. Of course, let me get a piece here. Of course, the way we set it up is we have this top piece of the face frame extended so when you when you put this together like that you still have your two inch margin here and then your door start here with the shadow and then so that and then this comes on next this goes on first and then this comes on and sits sits in this shoe like this so there's the um Excuse me, I'm sniffling because, you know, we were sawing all day. So, but there's the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the crown right there. It, it, it comes off that shoe molding and then extends up and, and that's how it uh, gets assembled. These parts get glued together and, you know, we sand them out and, um, and then we'll, we'll actually water lock these with probably the same thing as the face frame, three coats of the finished sealer. And then we'll come and put the, put the satin two coats maybe up in place after we're done sawing and, you know, getting our miters tight, inside, outside miters. And um, so, you know, that's pretty much it. So there's uh, one, two, three, five components. So here. We milled it all up today for the for the whole kitchen, and uh, we just gotta sand that, 
sand this all down. And uh, we use the edge of the blade for the table saw on that, see? Just set a fence up and you can just run it in there. As long as you just go a little bit at a time, that was the final setting um, that made these. And then there's the hats. Just a little profile. Um, you can see the shape. This is all leftover stuff we had too. It's all scrap pieces we had. So we just, you know, using stuff that we had from all our rips and cuts. And then there's the shoe molding. And that accepts the crown. And, and then there's the splines. We made up all the splines that connects them. See? We gotta sand this stuff down. And then um, that's pretty much it. There's your, your board. They, they kind of this board here reestablishes the face frame plane. This one. But anyways, you know, and then they and then they shift out against each other. So when you because you really visually look at these crowns from the ground, like a worm's eye view looking up and and then the light, the, the way the light, the lights are recessed about two feet off the face of the cabin and it casts the shadow down, um, you know, away, see, and then you'll get a flash of light at the bottom of the curve and a shadow and those, uh, the top of the curve and, and shadows inside those riglets, uh, cork lines. Um, Anyways, that's it. Just sharing what we were up to today, and that's the start of our crown molding pieces. We got to put them together, sand them, and then seal them. Anyways, guys, have a good one, and maybe we'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.